Hello and welcome to adimate.tv. I'm Chetan Shah. We learn to live and live to learn in what has turned out to be an unprecedented situation, an unprecedented pandemic, with history being written across the geography of Mother Earth. And a minor virus has created a major catastrophe, making each and every one of us rewind, rethink, reboot, reformat, restructure, re-strategize before we rebuild. Rebuild a new future, a new normal. In the world of education, particularly higher education, the challenges have been unique, but such unique challenges require unique solutions and more importantly, unique opportunities to be created. For that, you need those at the helm to have a strong past and even a stronger future. The past to bring in the sense of experience and knowledge and the future to show evolution, embracing anticipation and evolvement. And that's why we have at the helm of our great institutions in this country, our very wise chancellor. And today we have one of the best amongst us, Professor Manoj Arora from BM Munjal University is here with us. What a pleasure to have you, sir, on our show. Thank you, Chetan. It's my pleasure to have a chat with you. First thing, sir, when you hear of the name of the university, obviously you were immediately transported into the huge legacy which you bear, the legacy of uh, exceptional enterprise, the leg legacy of deep philanthropy of the Munjals, and the legacy which is not just in this country in fact it's taken india to the global map in so many ways particularly by being the world's largest two-wheeler manufacturer so when you have such a huge legacy on on your shoulders how does it weigh for you it's about now one year and nine months that i am here heading this beautiful university. Earlier, I was heading Punjab Engineering College, Chandigarh, Absolutely. where I spent five years, and my parent institute had been IIT Rudki. When I started looking at the kind of universities which are coming up during these times, Munjal University caught me like anything. When I approached uh, the chancellor and the president, and when I started talking to them that what kind of university they are building it attracted me like anything that here is a university which believes in quality of education and when we say quality of education uh, an academic institution you know uh, is built on three four pillars uh, which is infrastructure is one which is physical infrastructure then the faculty and the students and the people who are there infrastructure wise the university has not compromised on anything. There are research labs, centers of excellence, beautiful infrastructure, beautiful ambience. When I talked about faculty, no compromise on that. Almost all the faculty members are PhDs from institutes of higher learning, not only in India, but abroad. The students' quality, right in the beginning itself, there is a complete filtration. This is the institute which interviews each and every student before they get into any program. So when we have to create leaders, we have to make sure that right from the day one, they have those kinds of quality. When I looked at that, I think, I think this is the place where I think I can contribute uh, from my experience of having stayed in 175 year old institute, IIT Rudki, and then guiding 100 years old institute, Punjab Engineering College, I think uh, I have the experience and with that experience, I think I should be able to lead this institute and because it has got the all kinds of ingredients, which I think should be there in today's context. The most brilliant part of the Munjal family is that it chooses the right people. And I'm so glad that it's chosen you to be at the helm of affairs. You know, and the other thing which is which is so deeply encouraging, uh, Rodaji, is that the way you've carried forward this legacy. I've had the fortune of uh, interviewing the, the legendary uh, B. M. Munjalji, and in my conversations with him, the things that came out, you know, were meticulous planning. You know, uh, 
at exceptional detail and a, a, a very in, you know uh, intriguing sense of the processes and you seem to have just encapsulated all that in in those in those couple of lines which you said it's really quite remarkable and i'm so glad that i started off with this question because uh, one would have assumed that uh, the legend would bear heavy on you but I, I think you've extracted the best parts of it so i congratulate you for that sir now moving on of course these are trying times and uh, uh, you know uh, the mujal family is known to overcome challenges through unique innovations uh, and uh, some very very deep rooted solutions so what have been there in the field of education at the university with you at the helm it's a very interesting time corona is there right new national education policy has also been launched the university was conceived 6 7 years ago and i looked at the strategy document five year strategy document which was uh, prepared at that time i was so amused and thrilled to see that 80% of the things which well, there national is education there. policy is talking now is solidly there it talks about blended learning it talks about online learning eh uh, Uh, it talks about training the teachers and one now when we are preparing our five year next five year strategic plan we have clear goals that that's what where we have to reach now coming back to corona since 6 years ago whatever we thought was right at that time right and we were supposed to do all those things right from the day one corona acted as a catalyst in taking that right so so as soon as our institute closed down at on 15th of march and 16th of march immediately what i did i called all the faculty members locked them in the room brought the people who were used to this online learning faculty itself and me we all sat together for 3 4 hours and we started learning from each other that no way our academics are going to stop here we have to continue and start learning from each other and that was the day and till today everything is online everybody is working from home everybody is taking classes everybody is tra- training themselves we immediately shifted to online learning so it was very easy for us whether it is students faculty staff everybody is contributing and everybody is con- on day to day basis learning that is the best part if i look at my faculty they would be attending some certificate course or the other to make sure that they are upgrading themselves to provide right kind of pedagogy to our students i'm so deeply impressed because in your entire dissertation i've heard the word learning i've not heard the word teaching and that's the hallmark of great leaders is is that first is a humility second is teamwork and you use the word learning from each other and the third is the fact that the quest to always improve that having been said in my conversations professor arora uh, the two things that have come out very starkly uh, as challenges for the fraternity which you represent a is uh, the 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 possibility of a digital divide given that everything has gone online we're also talking about blended education but the fact is there's just not enough of infrastructure in terms of bandwidth in terms of instruments uh, and devices and the second is that well it's all very well to say that you know we should go online but teaching the teachers It's good, very well to say that you know teachers need to update themselves. They need to go and you know and start learning again. But the challenges, first of unlearning and then of relearning, have been very uh, remarkable for most people. How has it been for you? Probably you might have noticed the word which I used more was blended learning. Online learning is just a media. We cannot forget our guru shishya parampara at all. The way we have. we nurtured right from our uh, 100 years old education system we cannot ignore that so when we say blended blended means since lot of material lot of information is available to today's digital kids so i don't need to repeat that into my 
simple classroom type setting where teacher will come and deliver whatever he knows and and that's it my classrooms have to become discussion rooms so when we say learning it's not teaching at all even when the students will come to the campuses lot of material will be given to them before they enter the classrooms and the classrooms will become discussion rooms with a small small sizes so we have to completely flip the learning and that is what we are doing we are mapping we have mapped each and every course now with okay say this and it all depends upon the nature of the course some courses need to be taught face to face i mean there is there is no question around that but majority of the courses will have some online component all the courses cannot be taught fully online so there will be 10% of uh, online coming up somewhere there 20% somewhere there and so on and so forth the courses will vary from 0 to 100% so the way to go is blended learning the external environment is is very different it's moving very differently right and there is a lot of apprehension uh, amongst parents uh, more than students whether they should be standing standing their ward at all to universities this year Uh, there is the health safety uh, concept there has been the concept of a zero year being floated uh, there is the advocacy of a gap year being talked about uh, there is also uh, being a hue and cry about why should one be paid uh, be paying the same amount of fee for online education i know these are things that you would also be confronted with so while that movement is also happening there's only so much you can do within the organization right which you are doing you know i must say with a uh, with a remarkable effort So where do you see this alignment actually happening in an environment where we still are confronting this huge question mark as to when will this pandemic actually get over I just quote one of the lines from somewhere that it is it is a change which is constant so change has to happen and whenever change happens right it always pinches people right it could be any uh, i mean any stakeholders of any 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 organization but change has to be embraced because it brings in lot of opportunities and probably covid has brought those opportunities so i am not taking this covid as a kind of uh, of course it is invisible enemy and it should not hamper our life we have to move on when this change happens if we will not change we will lag behind like anything so we have to embrace this it is the responsibility of each and every one of us you you did talk about this uh, bandwidth issues and other issues i think the country is also quite aware about that and they are doing all their bits that how to reach the last mile the last person to make sure that these things reach them thank you for again for for building up that sense of, of confidence and encouragement and even motivation and the nep also talks about overseas education and overseas players coming in now you talked about a lot of uh, your uh, your faculty you know taking overseas intervention and overseas you know support and assistance so do you look at this entire framework uh, because as an opportunity or a threat because uh, at the end of it all the pedagogies you know may change uh, but the universe remains the same so with overseas players coming in would it be good bad not so good premature uh, or highly competitive how do you look at it it's an opportunity i believe see education is not restricted to only one country now it has become global you have to compete with every international universities and international partnerships are the way to go if suppose some international university come for example mit builds a campus here i should be excited that how can i improve myself to compete with that that university that will bring bring in a healthy competitions secondly we have to have these international relationships with us for the growth of everybody we learn from each other now if i look at teaching courses if my course is being half half of that course is being taught by an a faculty in harvard yale or uh, or imperial uh, or cambridge why would not i be interested in 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 utilizing that so i should be rather happy to involve uh, faculty from international universities learning from those people uh, 
so so i feel that there is a huge scope of improving ourselves when these people are there i'm fascinated by the way you repeat this uh, word learning from each other and uh, i have learned so much from you already in these last few minutes uh, so thank you uh, for that sir uh, i'm going to go back to the first question in a different light now uh, before i reach the conclusion and that is on the legacy of of the munjals i first talked about it how much of a burden was it on on a professional like you now i'm going to say that how are you going to extend this because i see that you're you're extremely creative in your thinking uh, how are you going to leverage this this as a brand uh, at a time when when this country uh, is 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 plagued by not just employment more important employability uh, you have an opportunity because you have a front end of a huge enterprise uh, to gain employability so would you be using this uh, in terms of assuring jobs also to your students has that been a part of your plan excellent chetan you ask and uh, ask that question again bml munjal ji you know was a great entrepreneur padma bhushan bml munjal ji uh, and you see his four sons all of them have that kind of is there in the genes of course, of course so my next five year strategy <laughs> my objective is this only to create an entrepreneurial university we have to be different so we don't want to get into that lot so whatever we will do we are going to become the most soft after entrepreneurial university Brilliant. in the country not in the country in the world we want to become we want to be talked about that only now to do that we already have started institute of innovation and entrepreneurs and we have started conducting lot many activities around that now all my academic programs will be linked to that objective in each course something or the other related to innovation related to design thinking related to uh, venture ideation related to these things every other student will be taught that part right from their right from the day one so so when we will start building that so i don't need to worry about then the jobs they will choose their career and that is my objective to take this uh, their whatever is there in, in the genes of our university i want to make sure that that is happening on the ground brilliant as the chinese say focus on the fishing rod not on the fish and you you will give a lifetime of of uh, of income and food uh, to your students so thank you for thinking that way i'm going to uh, conclude by asking you one of my favorite questions Uh, particularly since i have learned so much from you i'd like our uh, audience and and our entire education ecosphere to learn from you what would be your spot of advice uh, professor arora for the four uh, sections of our education ecosphere uh, one would be the parent one would be the student one would be the teacher and the fourth would be your fellow vice chancellor for well, the message to the parents parents is clear that leave whatever your children want to do to them let them work as per their passion whatever education they want to have let let you allow them to have that for the students i would say whatever you decide about your future if you think that that is the institution where you can build your future you will be spending 3 to 4 years of your precious life prime prime life uh, there choose those campuses where you think the learning happens and where you think your passion can be taken care of so that you become good citizen of the country and serve the country for the teachers i think i would say just think introspect where do you stand if you will not change now it will be very very difficult for you to change so you have to continuously learning every day and make sure that you are filling the gap which the next generation of student have and 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 you so that gap should be minimized as soon as possible only if you can talk their language then only learning is going to happen so upgrade yourself up to that extent to the fellow vice chancellor i said if we can create university clusters in the region right and if we can join hands and co-create the environment and learn best practices from each other i think we can utilize our resources optimally whether it is physical infrastructure whether it is 
faculty uh, intellect or anything as a group of vice chancellors as a group of leaders of academic institutions we will be doing a lot for this country let's forget about our egos and everything let's work together i often end of my my interviews sir, uh, and my conversations sir, uh, with a single letter as an alliteration which becomes an easy takeaway for our viewers and for you i can only think of one letter and that's the letter p p for being preemptive p for being purposeful p for being partnering and participative p for being pragmatic p for being positive and above all p for being progressive professor manoj arora you well and truly are a very wise chancellor thank you for talking to us and thank you thank you chetan nice talking to you it's a great initiative and i think uh, uh, the way uh, chetan uh, you are you are talking to people you are you are reaching to each and every uh, person in a, any profession i think that's the way to go and uh, i'm sure uh, your initiative initiative the initiative which you have taken just now uh, is is going to help the country a lot in many many different ways and i wish you all the best chetan and uh, maybe uh, we can talk again uh, at some point of time thank you very much thank you